and welcome back to another video on the Military and Surplus channel. Today we'll be taking a look and a review at the GP4 respirator. Before we start the video uh, I will give a shout out to Gazov if I'm pronouncing your name right again. So definitely go check out his channel. There's some very interesting things on there and it's a lot more professional than mine. But I'm digressing and uh, his link will be in the description below. So let's get straight to the video. So the Soviet or Russian GP4 as you see here was the predecessor to the GP5 respirator. I don't have this on me at the minute, it's in my collection. But you know, you've seen it before. It was issued to the civilians in Russia and also in some other Warsaw Pact countries, I believe. But Poland made their own variant called the ML, which isn't very different. And there was also a, a very rare grey rubber variant of this mask. Let's move that into frame. There was, yeah, a grey rubber variant, which I don't have because they're quite rare, like I've said. But I'm just waffling at this point. So, this mask was issued from 1955 to 74, and this is also the production dates on them. Like most masks in the GP series, these work on a simple double exhale valve and double intake valve system. Uh, the eyepieces on this mask are crimped on and are made of glass. I'm going to do this upside down because it's not wanting to work right now because of the position of the filter. But as you can see, it's like your bog standard GP5 eyepieces, GP series. But what you might notice with this mask, I'll just remove the head straps out this way. Uh, there, There is no area for putting anti-fogging inserts in. Which is quite counterintuitive, bearing in mind this mask doesn't feature any uh, anti-fogging measures. So when you breathe through it, you will fog up incredibly fast. Because, like I've said, there's no anti-fogging measures actually inside the mask. But what came issued with the mask, I don't have on me here. Sorry about that. I'm again sorry. Uh, there was a little anti-fogging stick, like a little cream that you would rub on the eyepieces. Or you could just use a uh, fairy liquid or the communist equivalent of fairy liquid. And that would stop the fogging. So the face the face piece itself is made of a strong green rubber. This is because obviously it was before the communists went cheap and it's actually quite comfortable. This doesn't make an airtight seal on me because up here the air, this mask doesn't properly go to my face. Like properly stick come towards my face. But this mask isn't gen used for genuine protection now anyway. As as you can see on the side of here, it says 1958. In the first quarter. So that's quite old. <laughs> and basically, this strong rubber is quite good because it's quite resistant. And it doesn't really change its shape that often. I mean, it doesn't really change its shape to like very strong crease lines. So mine is the GP4U because it features a, a longer, more stocking net covered hose. But the GP4, the original one, had a, a smaller hose that was made of uh, rubber again. But it wasn't covered in this and it was just black. And again, obviously, it was goth threaded, goth threaded like every Soviet mask ever. Apart from the modern day ones, which are bayonet filters, I believe now. But again, I'm off on a tangent. Uh, the exhale valve is very, very simple. It's a double, I believe, exhale valve. So, as you can see in here, get these stupid six point head harness out of the way. There. Uh, there is the intake valve there. It's going to be very hard to show on camera. And the intake valve there, which is double uh, valve I've, I believe and there's the oh sorry then there's the XL valve there which is again double but is protected by this on mine this spins I don't know if this happens to everyone's but as you can tell it don't come off and it's also in this green metal housing obviously I shouldn't have to say this by now but this filter and every other coffee can filter and the EO14 filters which were issued with the Polish variant do contain asbestos. We know this for the coffee can filters because it even says in manuals that have been translated, like on an ingredients list if you want to call that, it says asbestos. 
But if you don't know what the inside of a coffee can filter light looks like, there you are. It's just straight down. Then it's like, just, it looks like, oh, I just dropped it, it's not a very smart idea. Uh, it's just like a cylindrical shape, or like a coffee filter, to be honest. And then you have the plug down here, which I'm going to try and get out without breaking my fingers. Which is probably going to be a lot harder than it sounds. Sorry if you can hear that banging. I have some decorative lights hanging outside my window and it's banging. And here's where the intake is. It's a little bit dirty because storage marks and this is a little bit dirty. This is not asbestos. This is talcum powder. And I've heard people say before they've had asbestos in the masks. The only masks that I believe had asbestos in them was the VM37, the VM... The VM37 and the VM40, the German World War II masks, where it has that little band in the middle of it, and the actual mask to do it. But again, like every time, I'm off on a di I'm off on a tangent, but if you don't know, that's your coffee can filter. Like I've said, does contain asbestos. But what is nice about this filter is, instead of like the GP5 style of filters, uh, there's a little string attached to like the actual plug, so you can't lose it if you have to pull it out in an emergency. And there's just the filter cap here. Put this on to show you what it looks like. And there you are. It's just your bog standard coffee can filter, really. It's not ever so different to the normal ones. It's just marked MIV, I believe that is, 579. The year 1957, which is older than the mask. And what looks like RN4Y. This is actually GP hyphen for you which basically this mask is, so it's a perfect match. Very good that, that's what you want. So we'll just attach this filter for aesthetics purposes now, because it looks cool. <laughs> Put it like that. So basically that's enough for the filter. And I will repeat, yes, it contains asbestos. I've said this already, but I've, there's people who don't accept the fact that it does. It's Russian, 1957. It's going to contain dodgy stuff. And if it didn't anyway, you don't want to breathe through old filters because even charcoal breaking down can do very dangerous things to your lungs. But I've said that enough times now. Uh, yeah, the coffee can filter. I'm just reading the script because my eyes are going incredibly funny. This is similar to the PDFD filter, I believe, but this is tan. And they also made a grey silvery variant of this filter. I'm not too sure on what that was for or what the difference is. But, oh well. My bundle, or well, I say bundle, my package, when it arrived a couple of days ago, came with the filter. A GP5 satchel for some reason, although it was advertised with a GP4 one. A GP4U, and that's it really. Uh, if you could help me on finding what the original uh, satchel is called, because I'm trying to find one for make it actually accurate. And I'll probably just keep this full of filters or something. But post that comment in the comment section below if you know where you can find uh, GP4 or 4 U's, uh, the satchel, the proper one. Please leave that in the comments. So everybody, this was my video on the Russian GP4 or GP4U respirator. Don't forget to check out Gazov's channel in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and cheerio.